God told me there was a couple of warnings he gave me to put past you. He says, don't forget that he has to come first so he gives you all that you need to overcome throughout your days and fulfill your life the way he wants you to. How many here know God's on your side? And you've got to realize and understand that he is willing and desiring for every human being to develop a relationship with him. Let me say this and set the stage for our sermon, okay? First of all, in the beginning, when God created man in his own image, after his own likeness, he made this planet just for us. And then he put, our, put us in it, and he says, take authority, groom it, watch over it. And of course, we know what happened. Third chapter of Genesis, Adam and Eve fell. Now, the thing that you need to understand, I think a lot of Christians might not understand this. And if you, if you do, just smile up at me. And that once this planet fell to Satan, because Adam and Eve gave it to him, in the temptations of Jesus, when, when uh, Satan said to Jesus, all these kingdoms I'll give you because they were given unto me. He was referring to Adam giving this planet over to the devil. Now, here's the rules. God was now outside of the planet looking in, and he's looking for somebody that would communicate to him so that he could come back in through invitation and begin to work in the planet. So we can read the planet was so bad. I mean, don't take this as not the gospel. This is the gospel. The planet was so bad that in Genesis chapter 8, there were only eight righteous people left in a planet that had probably 10 million to 30 million people on it. That's how corrupt the planet became. Now, here's a couple of points I want to give you. Number one, Satan has a rule in this planet. And even though Jesus Christ came and he died and he rose again, the rule is no one can accept you, Jesus, until they call on you. Now, what was the temptation like in the garden? Well, the serpent gave Adam and Eve an alternative, and Adam and Eve chose that alternative. They turned it back on God. They went and chose the other. Now God is giving us, the human race, in the earth, and an alternative. But the rules are, we must call upon the Lord to be saved. God didn't knock you down and throw you on the ground, Denise, and say, you're going to get saved. Right. We might have done that to ourselves. So get this rule. Unless we ask God to come into our heart, unless we call upon the name of the Lord, we're lost. Hello. So those are the rules. That's why Jesus had to come to where we were, bind up our wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and he says, at the end, he says, now you choose me and my father will accept you lock, stock, and barrel and cleanse you from your sin and make you his own. Say amen, somebody. So the rules are we have to call on God. Okay? We have to call on God. So we did that. We got born again. You guys are here. I know most of you. And you've asked Jesus Christ to be Lord and Savior of your life. Now, we need to go to the second truth I want to give you. You are a three-part being. Everyone go three. three. I'm a spirit. I have a soul. And I live in a body. My body is not me. It's my tool. My mind is not me. It's an open slate. Like a computer program. My job is to get into the word and reprogram my mind. And then my spirit is already set. It's already born again. It already has God dwelling on it. So now we have to get what's on the inside of us, God, out into our thinking, out into our living. Can you say amen? So what I have to give you today is directly designed to do that for you. Now the other point, the third point I want to give you is the strong man has been bound. Jesus Christ died near over a little over 2,000 years ago, rose again from the, the dead, and now sits at the right hand. And Satan must obey Jesus Christ. Everyone say, Satan must obey Jesus Christ. 
So let me say this to you. The devil would like you to think that you can rebuke him, but he's just going to come around and goof with you anyway. The devil would like for you to believe that the armor of God that God gave you is not perfect. It has holes in it. And God saved you, but not quite always, you know, not completely. So you're having struggles. I want to tell you that's a bunch of lies. Amen. That's what, what's been preached for thousands of years in the church. Let me tell you, do you think God the Father would send his son in an imperfection way, not be able to bind up our wounds and take care of our needs? Absolutely not. But remember who's running this planet in this world system. He is a liar. He doesn't have any truth in him. So he will always tell you what you have, which is God, is not enough. And then we'll turn and sell you on religion. He'll make you feel that you went to church once a week and so everything's cool. Forgetting your daily relationship with him. He'll make you think that you've arrived. Now that you're a minister like such as me. Oh, you don't have any problems. Ministers have the worst problems because Satan wants to take us out because we're giving out information. And especially if it's absolutely pure truth. That's what I seek God for. I want to give you what you need so you can be a success. You can live. One day when we get all around heaven, you can say God was because of that man and that woman and that person that they shared with me and they didn't play games with me. They gave me the truth and now I'm free and I'm with all of you. Amen. Amen. And so... If you are having, I'm going to say something to you, it might stir you up a little bit. If you're having problems in your walk, it is not necessarily the devil. He needs your flesh. So let's get into this today and really open your eyes to some things. Amen? So when Adam and Eve fell, the communication between God and them was severed. Remember God came down in the cool of the day? The cool of the day is morning before it gets hot. And Dusk before it gets uh, cold. Hello? So they got visited by God twice. Now let me tell you something what God revealed to me. God came to visit them on their planet. You see, God gave this planet in Genesis 1, 26, and through 28 and says, you take dominion. This is yours. I give you all the works of my hands. You so God would come and visit with this man twice a day. In other words, they made God feel welcome. I want to tell you, you don't have to have God come visit you. He lives in you. But in order for him to share what he needs to share with you, you got to learn to relax and give him the time he needs. Look at your neighbor and say, gotcha. Because the enemy and the world... And our habits won't give you the time you need to know God this way. So it becomes, our busyness becomes almost an enemy. Everybody wants to be busy. We want to accomplish things. We want to do things. But did you know Saturday in the Old Testament is declared what? The Sabbath, which means the day of? Well, why are you so busy on a Saturday night? You mess up Sunday morning. You got the whole plan messed up. God gave that time in the evening on a Saturday to think of him and rest. So in the first day of the week, you come and you meet with God. That's what church is here, to meet with God, not necessarily each other, yes, but to meet with God so God gives you your personal instructions. And he does it in a corporate way. Are you with me? Through prayer, we reestablish our relationship with God. So if you don't have much of a prayer life, you don't have much of a relationship with God. Now, don't get mad at me. I want to try to encourage you to develop that. Amen. Through Christ, we can talk with God, our Father, and he listens. And through our time with him, 
in prayer, we become transfigured or transformed. And he changes our soul to take on his personality. Can you say amen? And so he begins to cleanse our thoughts so we can enjoy who we are with him. I've never had so much fun in my life serving God. I was a rock and roll drummer. I had pretty much all that I wanted. That's what I thought. Amen. I got to the point where I threw TVs out of second story windows just to see what would happen. I was so bored. When you have a lot, you seem to take a ease when you shouldn't. Because the thief comes to steal. You get a lot of money, and he'll come up with a business plan for you. Satan hates some things. Number one, let me, he hates people with influence. Because they're, if they're godly, they're going to influence people for God. Can you say amen? He hates people with money. Because if they're godly people, they're going to give to godly kingdoms, and they're going to do godly things with their godly money. Can you say amen? He hates beauty. Anybody that's pretty or handsome, he's going to corrupt right away. Why? Because he's the boss in the planet, he thinks. So if you start to become a good Christian and you start to be faithful, he is going to visit you and harass you a bit. But what I've got to tell you is you don't have to worry. Jesus said it this way. He says, the prince of this world, he comes. But he can find nothing to connect me with. Satan will come. He will tempt you. And if you got the right stuff on and doing the right stuff, it won't even phase you. But he will come back at a more opportune time to try to harass you. So why does he do that? To try to get your eyes off of God, your ears off of God, and put them on circumstances around you. Because we know circumstances around you does, does not teach us very good lessons. The school of hard knocks can be pretty much hard knocks. Are you with me? All right. So in the Old Testament, now listen to this, very important. In the Old Testament, God heard the people prayers. He, he heard their prayers. For example, we talked about Daniel. And my, and my nephew's here, so we talked about Daniel. You brought Daniel up. In Daniel, we find out that Daniel had fasted 21 days. And he was seeking the deliverance of the Israelites from Babylonia, from Babylon. Seven years in captivity, and he's seeking God. And it says, when the angel came with his answer, he said this. I'm paraphrasing. You can look it up later. He says that the moment you prayed in the Old Testament, Daniel, God heard and sent me. But I had to fight to get the answer back into the planet to you, Daniel. It took 21 days for the angel Gabriel to whack himself through the satanic mess in this planet to bring Daniel his answer. Now, why do you suppose it was so bad? Because God was outside, only limited in the Old Testament, working with people that believed in him. But see, you and I are not in the Old Testament, are we? We're in the New Testament. What did Jesus do? He came, he walked, he died, he rose again, and he stripped the strong man, Satan, of his ability to hinder prayers. He stripped Satan of his power to deceive in such a way to a believer because we have something called the armor of God. And that particular armor that we wear is literally in such fashion that it will literally put the devil in a spot every time and will give you what you need throughout your day if you learn to put it on correctly. And remember... Satan doesn't want you to learn to do anything correctly. He wants your entire Christianity to be a guess. You're hoping you're doing all right. So he keeps you out of the Bible. And then when you get in the Bible, he makes you read the Old Testament. You forget the New Testament, which is far more important. Because it gives you the relationship you need with God. Not about God, like the Old Testament does. Now, you still with me? All right. So in the New Testament, 
When we say Father in Jesus' name, the angels are right here to give us our answer. There isn't any whacking through the spiritual principalities of the air and the prince over uh, whatever to fight and bring the answer. No, Jesus already whipped them boys. He put them in their place and says, the only thing you could do is appeal to my people and try to trick them to believe an alternative. But I got news for you, Satan. Those that are fastened unto me, I am their wisdom, not the world. Well, you should be excited. Yes. How many of you know you don't want to take your advice from the world? You've got to buy this car now. The deal will be gone tomorrow. What do you mean? How many ever had a salesman tell you you have to get it now? Satan's always telling you the problem is so big, I've got to deal with it now. You've got to look at this problem. You've got to sit this situation. Hello? No, you don't. Jesus says, come unto me. Every day, meet with him so he gives you the rest. You, you don't meet with God first thing, you get the mess. Not from God. <laughs> I don't preach myself happy. Excuse me while I get a little sip here. Boy, I haven't even gotten into the scripture yet, so. Catch it. So, why doesn't everybody just suddenly get saved? You got to ask. We have not because we ask not. So Satan set it up. If the human beings don't ask for you, God, they can't have you. And God okayed it. And you say, well, why would God do that? Because Satan said, they chose me the first time. And I believe, God, they're going to keep me as their, their evil one and re reject you. See, that's Satan's whole entire thought. He believes he's winning. But if you just take an alternative and look and walk with God, he's not winning at all. He's losing and has but a short time. It says that Jesus bound him and already judged him and sentenced him to hell. He has but a short time. So what is he doing? He's getting after deceiving people. And he won't leave you alone either. He'll tell you, here's one. This one here, God told me to tell you. The enemy is trying to bring in indifference, making you feel not like the gang Listen to me. Don't, don't be getting distracted right now. Indifference. Why is that so evil? When you're indifferent with somebody, you're all different. But when you're indifferent means that you're at odds with somebody. That's not unity. That's strife. So you'll come in. You'll be a part of the women's ministry. But you, you feel a little bit not accepted. Deception. You go to church and nobody said hi to you today. And so your whole day is frustrated. Deception. Don't you understand that Satan wants to fill your head with indifference so that you can't unite. One a thousand flight, two ten thousand to flight, three one million to flight. And then we're indifferent. I don't care what color skin you have. I don't look at your skin. Neither does God. Indifference. Whether you like baseball or your favorite team, don't argue about it because it's indifference. You give Satan power. Wars, rumors of wars. Nation shall rise up against nation. Huh? You mad at somebody because they said something? Instantly forgive them. So you ready to get into this? Let me teach you what Satan's been doing and show you how to defeat him every time if you listen to the wisdom of God. Say amen, somebody. Amen. God's got you so covered that you can be a bubbling idiot and still be saved. Amen. Hello. Amen. I know. Notice my hand's on me. Okay. All right, so go with me to John chapter 14, please. In that day, you'll ask me nothing. Okay? In that day, you will ask the Father in my name. He's talking about the day when he goes home to be with the Father. 
he gets resurrected. Okay? So we'll be in John 14. We'll be in John 15 and John 16 briefly. I don't know if they're up there or not, but I'm not going to turn around. John 14, verse 12. Listen to this. <coughs> Who's speaking? <coughs> Jesus. So is he lying? He's absolute truth, isn't he? So we can believe this absolutely, can't we? So you've got to believe the scripture absolutely. Okay? It's not written for our humor. It says, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, in Christ, the works that I do, will he do also. <coughs> Excuse my cough in there, saying a lot. Works that Jesus did, so you do also. Now, let me ask you. Are you born again? Who lives in you? God. Jesus, yeah. So is he the same yesterday, today, and forever? Okay, so why do we see certain Christians getting all kinds of prayer results and getting people healed and other Christians sitting around barely, you know, able to do stuff with their life? It has to do with whether or not you let Jesus control and guide your life to be in charge of your life or not. Hello. To be carnally minded, it says, is death. Fleshly minded is what carnal minded means. So catch this. Well, the works that I do shall he do also because, and even greater works than these do, because I go to be with my father. He's talking to his disciples. Say, you got what you see me do, guys? You're going to be able to do. I'm going to the father. And that's going to start it. What happened? Jesus rose again from the dead. He bound the devil. Only thing Satan has now is the ability to deceive. He has no supernatural powers. Deceptive powers. Watch a magic trick sometime. It's all sleight of hand. Deception. It says he will come with all lying signs and wonders. He didn't say he would do miracles. He said he would make them look like they're miracles. Take the sickness off he put on them. I want to teach you, I want to educate you in such a way that you can understand where you're at, where you're not, and how to get where you need to be. So, he says, and whatever you ask the Father in my name, I will do it, that the Father may be glorified. There you go, Peggy, in the Son. What have you done with Jesus? Is he hidden under a bushel in your life? Nobody could see God in your life because other than the bumper sticker on your car. You're supposed to bring him out from the inside outwardly in your words, in your actions, in what you say, what you do. Can you say amen? Because you're a new creature in Christ Jesus. You're walking in newness of life. No weapon formed against you will prosper. No plague will come now into your dwelling. For God lives in you. Oh, gee, don't be so excited about it. Catch me. The devil now must, and his kingdom, obey Jesus. So most Christians talk about, now listen to me carefully, talk about Jesus. Wonderful. But a lot of Christians need to know they can talk Jesus. In other words, you have the ability to open your mouth and bring Jesus right out of your words. And it comes like a sword and it cuts Satan's power. Most people pray from here. Everybody touch your head and say, empty heads. <laughs> okay? We pray from here? No! Pray from your heart. Right? Out of your gut. Don't think about how you should pray because you're going to mess it up. Just follow your gut. Sometimes you can't even formulate words, but God understands everything. You see, in the flesh, you touch your surroundings. In the soul, you touch the intellect of people. But in your spirit, you touch God and you move mountains. Yes. That's who you are. Nobody's telling you that. You want to know why Satan has me first on his list? 
why he takes things from me and it does all those things? Because I'm one of the guys that I am totally sold out to give you what I know. And I, if I could do it, I'd rip your head off and dump it in and shake you up so you get it. But I know it doesn't work that way. But you're never going to get a bunch of religion from me. I'm going to tell you how it is. And most people, if they love God, will love it. And other people who are religious will hate it. Because it just exposes them. They've been goofing around with their whole Christianity, playing the old rumble games, and they've been doing it all in the flesh. And when they stand before the Lord, their entire life will burn up. And God says, what did you do with my son? And then you'll have all these excuses and all these things. Now, please, I'm not talking about you. And God will say, yeah, but it doesn't matter what you do. It matters how your relationship is with me and why you do them. Why do you share the gospel? Why do you sing a song? Is it because you want to be noticed? Or you want to really minister to God's heart? You see, motives are very important. Are you with me? Second scriptures in John 15, listen to this. You did not choose me, Jesus said, but I have chosen you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. You're going to be fruitful. And that your fruit should remain. Listen, when you pass away, what's going to be written on your tombstone? That's all she wrote. <laughs> no, I want to leave something. When I go, I want to leave something behind. I leave property that is still going to be ministering Jesus. I'm going to have a little church building here that after I'm dead and gone, my wife's dead and gone, the work of God's still going on here. I don't want to leave a mess nor bills. I want to leave God. Remember what my dad first said to me when I got saved. My dad was cool. He knew me when I wasn't saved. And then I got saved and it was such a shock to him. You know what he said? He says, at least carry now when you talk, I'll know I can believe you. <laughs> anyway, moving right along. Okay. You did not choose me. I have chosen you. Say, I'm chosen by God. God wants you to bear fruit. Amen. And that your fruit remain. And whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. You see, you're his representative. What better way to whack the devil is right in the midst of Satan's tricks, you get blessed. Kind of like it's written. I have set a table for you amidst your enemies. Come and eat. So your enemies are out there, but you're in my heart, people. The enemies out there are stirring trouble, but you're walking with Jesus. Can you say amen? Don't get so excited about it. Hey, I want to tell you, the enemy comes, and he sits right there in that front pew right there. And he listens to how much you listen. Listen, Satan has worked hard to get people to not listen. I'm a, I, I can tell you, you can look at the YouTube and some of these things. About the time I'm ready to make an entire great statement, the prince of the air erases it out of the, the ether and suddenly, what? You see, the trickster is just that. He's just a trickster. If you have a day and suddenly you, you find yourself clumsy and bumbling around during the whole day, stop everything and pray. Don't think that that's what your day's going to hold. I guess this is what the day holds for me. <laughs> Who told you that? Come on, laugh with me a little bit, okay? How many here see yourself in what I'm saying? All right, so the idea is again... Eyes off of who? Yeah. Folks, listen. If, if your eyes are on you, you'll suffer depression. Other times you'll suffer highs and lows. Folks, our eyes are not supposed to be on us. Our eyes are not supposed to be on others too, right? Yeah, so I don't want you to really focus on me as, I, as if I'm somebody special. I'm your friend. Amen. I remember this. Can I tell you this? 
I had a lot of people who wanted to be my friend. So I said, I'll be your friend. But I want to let you know that we're just friends. You don't have to perform for me. I have two examples. I had a guy who wanted my friendship so bad, he took me to the fair and found out that I like roller coasters and zippers and all those fancy rides, you know, turn your stomach and all. I don't anymore, but I used to. So he, let's go on the ride. So he picked all the terrible rides, rides that I like, but rides nobody else. And he rode along with me, and then we got off the first ride, and he was gone. He was over on the dumpster. He was trying so hard to be my friend that he was killing himself. Listen, you're already my friend. I love you. Show yourself faithful and be here. Learn. I tell you what, we can give you at least two or three intensive months of teaching. You will thank people like me. Because the world is not passing this information out. And the church, generally speaking, is not touching things like this because it might ruffle some feathers. Ruffle the feathers. People are dying and going to hell while we're playing daisy chains. Hello. Somebody... Is, is, and you know they're not saved? Say something. Would you like to know my God? All right, move on past this now. Finally, this 16th chapter of John says, And then that day, the day that Jesus goes to be with the Lord, you will ask me nothing. See, a lot of Christians today, I remember the Jesus movement. They're talking to Jesus, and they're, Oh, Jesus, help me this, and Jesus, help me that, and Jesus, and God's listening. But who's above all? Who's through all? Who's in us all? Who's the Almighty? The Father. And even though we pass Jesus' name around, and it's great, the Father wants to be addressed, He wants to be acknowledged. Hello? And yet, for the while, the, all the Jesus people didn't talk about Jesus, talk about Jesus. And now, if you listen, nobody wants to talk about Jesus. The, in the name of the Lord, we pray in the name of Christ, in the name of Yeshua, and Wubba Listen to me. It's the name of Jesus above every name that's named in heaven and earth and under earth. No other name given among men whereby we must be saved. So Satan naturally gets you not to speak the name of Jesus. You notice nobody cusses in the name of Buddha. <laughs> oh, Buddha! <laughs> oh, Krishna! Oh, Mohammed! Yeah. You know? <laughs> no. Jesus. And see, Jesus is the focal point. Jesus came for him so we could see him and could touch him. We could know him. He's the focal point. He that has seen me, Jesus said, has seen the Father. They look perfectly identical. Not the same. The Holy Spirit looks like Jesus too. But he is the Spirit around. His manifestation is to be everywhere at once. To bring the Father, to bring the Son. Anyway, we, that's another lesson in itself. Don't you miss next week because we're going to teach you about who you are. Spirit, soul, and body. So, so listen, son, in that day you shall ask me nothing. But whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. And until now, you've asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy be made full. Did you hear anything saying God might not answer you? Have you ever been told in church, sometimes God doesn't answer your prayers? And do you have any idea why that might be? No, but you might accept it as the truth when it isn't. The only thing that God won't answer if it's a self-destructive prayer, like this, God carries out of line, give him a bad week so he knows he should love you. You pray like that, you're going to have all hell break loose on you. Because I'll release it on you. People pray like that over it. I don't like so-and-so, God get him. Make his life miserable so he'll learn to respect me. Can you imagine people playing stupid stuff like that? They do it all the time. 
God is not into destroying anybody's life. So the Bible says, bless those who curse you. Those that persecute you, bless. So do not curse. Why? Because in God's blessing is salvation. And if somebody's being ornery, bless them because God will save them. And then won't they have a heyday? In that day you shall ask the Father in my name. A couple of points. Number one, Jesus Christ now dwells in you and I. We approach God the Father, he sees his son. So he doesn't say go away. His ears are always open to our prayers. Huh? Amen? Two, start your day off with a tuning session. Now some of you might play guitar. How many's ever seen a violin? A Stradivarius violin. They're very sensitive. And if you get a Stradivarius in a different temperature in the room than the regular normal temperatures, it will throw the Stradivarius violin out of tune. Some guitars are the same way. When the temperature of the room gets cold and it gets warm, it throws the guitar out of tune. When your temperature gets warm and cold, when your surroundings are starting to buffer you, you can get out of tune. So you meet with God, he tunes you up in the morning. Can you say amen? He quiets your flesh down because Bubba gives you the most problem. You know Bubba? Your flesh. Treat your flesh not as you. Treat your flesh as an instrument for you. Not controlling you. You got to have another piece of pie. Why don't you rub some in your eye while you're at it? You see, get to know who you are, how you function, why things are, how you analyze. Stick here long enough and we'll show you. I know it seems like a but it's just what God has shown me all my life. I, I go to God and I say, God, I'm not this religious stuff that I hear. Our pastor told us, he said, when I leave, I'm going to retire. Go find a church that preaches the gospel like me. So we did. I couldn't find one anywhere. Got kicked out of two of them. How many ever been? Don't raise your hand. I was trying to help this church. My pastor says, go be a part of this church and help them. So I went. And there were, it was a question and answer day. And so he said, well, am I here? Could witness to a Jehovah Witness and feel like he could do a good job? My hand goes up. Nobody else's hands went up. And that guy went, hmm. And then I'm the new guy, right? And another question came up, and I put my hand up. And then I noticed nobody else's hands are up. So the third question came, and I kind of knew the answer to all of that. For example, you know, if you're a Christian, you should be able to explain the Trinity, the Godhead. If you can't, I'll sit down with you, and by, the t by 10 minutes' time, you'll be able to explain it. And yet, Bible college says, it's a mystery nobody knows how to explain. What? I'd love to tell you about God, but I don't know enough. Can I ham it up a little bit here? All right, let's go on. All right. Start your day off but getting tuned up with God. Amen. Third, prayer is a joy. Never treat it as a chore. I got to go pray. I promise I commit to the Lord an hour every day. Hey, stop it, religious man. Stop it. God doesn't want to hear your complaining before you pray. Prayer is not a chore, it's a joy. <laughs> you're meeting with the, one, the joyous one. That your joy be full. And see, state of mind. How do you go to prayer? State of mind. Who puts your state of mind in the state of mind? Is it God or is it circumstances? Is it your friends or is it the Holy Spirit guiding you through the word of God, giving you hope and, and, and just blessing you? That's who you are. Say, I'm blessed, not a mess. Okay. All right, so meet with God. That's a, this prayer time is a time of refreshing. It's a time of wisdom. It's a time of weeping. When I get, I, I can't even get 10 feet within my time. I spend a little place in my living room where God and I meet. 
I can't even get to the chair without weeping and tell them how much I love them. And I've never used to be that way at all. I used to be pretty composed, you know. God wants to massage your heart. He wants those tears to flow so readily. So when it comes time when somebody hurts you, you can forgive them, for, forgive them easily. And you won't hold any ought or stress on your life. Can you say amen? Because you turn your life over to Jesus, not the world. Here's some thoughts. Number one, start your day off with who? Everyone say, my first priority is God. Okay, what's your second then? Family. What's your third? Work. What's your fourth priority? Others. What's your fifth priority? You. When you put yourself ahead of others, you're going to cause a mess. When you put yourself, not down, but when you put yourself in a humble position, you'll have plenty of friends. Hello, are you with me? You follow what I'm saying? Okay. Don't misunderstand. Start your day off with God. Get tuned up. Get your mind quieted. Get your flesh shut down. And then go conquer. Say, I got it. How about today? How was your prayer time today, all you faithful saints? Should be good. You don't have to spend a long time, just a short time meeting with God, surrendering. Make sure you're in his hands and not on your own. Gosh, I'd hate for, for you to be driving when it could be Jesus driving your car. Stay with God throughout the day. Can you say amen by just talking with him? God and I talk all day. I don't make it a formal prayer. He says, God, hey, I got to put this tarp over on, on, this, on this building. And Lord, I need some ideas on how to get this tarp. It's just me and my wife. How do we do it? And God gives me the pictures. He says, tie a rope on each end and then put something heavy on each end and toss it over the bars. And you toss over the bars, you just pull it over like that and then fasten it down. Some people, that would take two weeks trying to figure out what to do. No, 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 you don't have to figure it out. You go to the one who figures everything out. And you talk to him as your buddy. I tell you what, when I worked for other people, first thing I did, my dad taught me, is get close to the boss. Get close to the people that have the authority and win them over. Then, if they're going to get rid of anybody, you'll be the last on their list. Jesus complimented somebody. He says, which of you having a business knows how to trade in your business and make more? He says, but the kingdom, where the Christians are, all they know how to do is make bad decisions and lose their money. And he says, go to a person who makes money and knows how to use it legally and learn. How many know there's plenty of people out there you can learn from? As long as they're not corrupted. I'm going to get anybody like Bernie Madoff making off with your money. <laughs> All right. Stay with God long enough for him to cover you for your day. You meet with him in the morning to cover you for the day. When you're covered for the day, guess what? You hardly even notice when challenges come your way because Jesus is in the forefront leading your day. Say amen. Thirdly, Jesus said, come unto me. Right? So who is the first person you come to? That's right. All you that labor and heavy burdened, come to Jesus first. And he says, I will give you rest. So do you want to enter your day with burdens? Thinking, how am I going to get this done? Are you going to meet with God for 10 minutes and have him give you rest and say, you know what? God's got the wisdom. Less gray hair. Hello. Have you noticed? I'm not dying my hair at all, but my hair is actually turning darker. I looked in the mirror and I said, who is that fella moving right along? Now listen, are you ready to go with me? Put on the armor of God. Let's get into it real quickly. I'll... It won't take me long to go through these things, okay? Because I'm not going to go forever on these armor parts. These armor parts are only there for us to understand what they are and how they work. 
Paul brought these armor parts in Ephesians and in the armor of God for us to get a understanding of how well we're protected. Can you say amen? It wasn't until Bible college telling you you had a hole in the armor. <laughs> Mess it up. Listen, the doubts and unbelief of human beings, don't let it make your faith in God of no effect. Can you say amen? All right, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 and 11. Listen. Finally, when you see the word finally means, okay, we got all this by you now. Now I want you to really get this. When you see a finally there, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Right? Not strong in yourself for the Lord, but strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now, folks, what I want to give you is to be strong in the Lord literally means to be enabled by the Lord. The word strong is the word to enable in strength. When it says be strong in the Lord, sit with God long enough for him to enable you in strength. And then listen to what it says. I love it. It goes right on and it says this. And in the power of his might. Two more words for power. The word power there is kratos. And the word might is iskus. Everyone say kratos. And iskus sounds like Kellogg and, and, and post. You know, arguing over the cereals back in the old days, you know. Hello? So look at, look at. Put on the kratos of his Iskus. I'm, I'm just making it sound kind of funny. It literally means this. It says, put on the jurisdiction power of God. You see, a, a, a police officer is not strong enough to stop a car physically. But he has the authority and is enabled. And he has the jurisdiction to hold up his hand, blow the whistle, and stop traffic. Can you say amen? And you're that cop. You have God on the inside of you. Learn to move in his authority. Can you say amen? All right. So be strong in the Lord and the power is might. The word power there means dominion. Might means supernatural ability. So be enabled in the Lord for dominion of a supernatural ability. That we may demonstrate his judgment already on Satan. You see, Satan in John 16, the prince of this world's already judged. So every time you get up in Christ, every time you do things in Christ, you are saying to Satan, you are judged, get out of the way. And he has to obey you. Amen. He has to obey you. He cannot not obey. He'll try to tell you he's not going to. I've cast a lot of devils out of people. And one of the things the devil will always say, I'm not coming out. I'm not coming out. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Just like that. Oh, he says, yeah, you are. And I just lift my hands and say, in the name of Jesus, and then I just start praising the Lord, and the angels come and just rip that thing right out of there. You see, I don't have to do the physical fighting. I do the physical resting in Christ while I pray and my words release God and his power to do the physical fighting. Can you say amen? So you better learn and I'll teach you how to pray accurately. How to pray precisely. If you treat your prayers, your words, like a paintbrush, what do you want in your friend's life. Paint Jesus in there with the words of your mouth. Close your eyes and let God give you and then begin to paint your prayers in the name of Jesus. Moving right along. That should thrill some of you because you can dig a cancer out of somebody's body in Africa without even leaving the chair. But you better be trained can you say amen? 
Somebody said, well, how come your church hasn't grown a whole lot? Because people don't want to be trained nowadays. Who wants to be told how to do it? Well, you do. But there's a lot of Christians out there think they know already. And their life shows that they don't. And what's so sad is they'll run around and tell everybody how much together they are. And their entire life, their bills, everything's way out of whack. Let's get together with God and let's get it straightened up. Can you say amen? If not, say oh me. Folks, you and I can come boldly before the throne of God, can't we? Why? Because there's nothing hindering us. We have Jesus in us, and we are in Jesus, right? So you just say, Father, I come in the name of Jesus, and boom, you're shot right before the throne. You are shot there like you were in Star Wars. Boom! And then you better have it together because you're sitting right in front of God. And you go, oh, 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 oh. I'm actually here. <laughs> this is the thing. Did the world and religion make the faith of God of no effect? God forbid. God set us so well up, but he, Satan is working hard to keep us from understanding what we have. Did you get it on your own? No. What do you have? Who do you have? And have you learned to utilize it? God has given apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for equipping the saints for the work of the ministry. My job is to equip you with knowledge so that when you practice it with God, you become the blessing he says you will be. Amen. Whew. So he goes on. So put on the whole armor of God, folks. You don't dress yourself. Okay, I was told in Bible college you kind of put the armor on. No. Everyone say, I know most of you know this. How do you get dressed in the morning? Well, you're of the new style. When you say, Father, in Jesus' name, God shoot your clothing right on you. It's not physical clothing. It's supernatural clothing, and God's the only one that can handle it. So he has to put it on you. You can't put it on yourself. You just say, Father, in Jesus' name, and just start loving them. And man, the armor goes right down on you. Say amen. amen. Next time the devil's harassing you, you want to really have fun? Just say, Father, in Jesus' name. Man, everything will shut right down. Uh-oh. <laughs> he called on God. Back off. Now, see, what you're doing is you're, you're physically working the plane here. What if I got somebody who's threatening to beat me up? What do you want you to do? Just say, Father, in Jesus' name. Because your mind's already thinking, well, he, what if he punches you already? Hey, doubter. Why are you thinking how you can get ruined when God lives on the inside of you? It's because of the negative programming you got when you were a kid. And all that stuff, all the experiences that we go through. But you know what? Today is the first day of the rest of your life, and you're passing through this day for the first time. And you're passing through this day with Jesus. The past is gone. Stop believing about God the way you used to understand God was. You believe the word exactly as it's spoken. And God will prove it to you. Ah, it's a boring day today. All right. So we're in the armor. So God puts the armor on you. Is there something wrong with God's armor? All right. We notice. I'm going I'm to list it for you because of time. Okay. It says, having done all to stand, do what? Stand. Having done all to stand, what? Stand. Okay. I'm standing, right? When you stand up in Christ, it's no longer you. The armor's over the top of you, and the armor looks just like Jesus. 
Your helmet, face of Jesus. Your mind, the helmet goes over your mind. You think thoughts of Jesus. I'm getting ahead of myself. So immediately you go, Father, in Jesus' name, it's Satan sees Peggy, but all of a sudden she's gone. Then the devil's going, oh, I hope she doesn't stand. I hope she doesn't start rebuking me. Let me get her distracted. The phone rings. I leave the phone go. Put the devil in his place. And do it with praise. Do it with laughter. All right, so you with me? Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wild tricks of the devil. And with the armor on, Satan's exposed. So whenever you say, Father, in Jesus' name, and the armor goes over the top of you, that armor has all the equipment because it's God to operate. Satan is automatically exposed, and if you dress him, he will run. So I see you. Satan doesn't want to be exposed. Every devil I've cast out of somebody, first thing I say is, I see you. And the he doesn't want to expose. And God sees you. And it's time to go. How about in your family? You got stuff going on in your family? It could be there because of a spirit. Take authority over it. Hello? So the armor goes down on you. What are the armor pieces? Well, I'm glad you brought that up. Okay, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness, against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. Those are the breakdown of satanic kingdom or the kingdom of darkness. The first word is principality. Everyone say principality. That is the word archon. Everyone say archon. It means reptile lizard. Who was Satan? That's right. All the fallen ones, over 200 of them, fell, fell from heaven. God threw them out with Lucifer. They all are the archons that we're dealing with on this earth. They haven't left. I'm going to tell you another thing. We're not being visited by any aliens from other planets. Because this planet is quarantined, folks. It's got a devil in it. And God doesn't want the freedom out there getting devils in it. Have you heard of the term quarantine? You, you had a lot of that the last year. That's to keep you healthy, right? Well, God's got this planet quarantine and he's watching over it. So nothing from outside is getting in. So all these demons and all these things we find flying around, they're coming out of a satanic dimension and they're coming out because people are praying in the occult and inviting those things out. Play with a Ouija board lately? You open portals where Satan, who has been bound in those rare areas, out to harass you. That's why you don't mess with the supernatural without the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus keeps you protected. God is very paranormal. I mean, he, he stands up oceans and he splits seas and you get gold out of fish's mouth. I'm very supernatural, but not without the blood of Jesus because this planet has an outlaw who wants you to pay more attention to him than God. So we're paying attention to God, but we got to get the wisdom from God so he can walk successful so other people can see that we're the light, the city on a hill that cannot be hidden. Why are you smiling when all hell is breaking loose in the planet? Because you're not, this world is not your home. So we wrestle against principalities, powers. Those are authorities. Okay. All right. So notice the term, we wrestle not against. Let's take the word against out. And let's put, we wrestle not. Well, who does then? God, Amen. don't wrestle with life. Go to God. Ask for peace. Ask for guidance. Ask him to order your steps. And then rejoice with him. Because he's going to do that very thing. But pay attention. You don't want God going, over here. <laughs> You're wandering around out there. 
Moving right along, okay? Powers against what? Spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. Who's the prince of the air? People, communism is a spirit. Socialism is a spirit. Self-isms are spirits that put the philosophy in the ideas of man. We've tried socialism and communism. And listen, it doesn't work. Only for a short time did the church have a, all things in common. But that didn't last very long because God wants us as individuals serving him. These are spirits running those philosophies in the earth. Islam, there's another one. A lot of the false religions in the world. Oh, listen, I'm not putting them down. That's man trying to reach God with Satan's help. Could you imagine the devil trying to get you to reach God? Well, he's not going to do that. He's going to get you to, to trust in him. So he'll become the little baby Jesus that you go to marry about. Anything but the real. All right, so I'm not trying to put religion down. Remember, religion was designed by Satan to kill Jesus. It was the religious people that were yelling, crucify him. Folks, I'll tell you, the people that give me the biggest problem as a minister are my fellow brothers and sisters. I don't even worry about the devil anymore. I'm not anywhere to be around hanging out with the dude. Can you say amen? Stand therefore having your girded your waist with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, having your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield or the portal of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all all the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God and praying always with all kinds of prayer and supplication petitioning in the spirit realm be watchful in this and persevere with supplications for all the saints can you say amen so let's break it down for you real quickly the truth Having your belt girded with truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So in the armor, the one who holds the rest of it on is Jesus. So the belt of truth is Jesus. Then it says having the breastplate of what? Amen. The Bible says when we have Jesus in our heart, we become the righteousness of God. Who's the righteousness of God? Jesus. And when you're wearing the armor, Satan looks at your chest and he sees the mark of Jesus right there. He can't fight what's right. Besides the breastplate of righteousness, then it says what? Your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You should be ready at any time to go anywhere to share the gospel. In other words, the gospel is Jesus. The word was with God and the word was God. So when you prepare your heart with God, your feet get excited to bring the gospel. You're shod, ready to bring the gospel. Can you say amen? Because it's good news. We all need that. Okay, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. Then it says, above all, taking the shield of faith. The word shield is the word portal. How many has ever heard the word portal lately? A portal opens up and somebody steps out of it. Your faith is a portal to God. It shuts Satan right out. It's a one-on-one -on -one directive portal. Not only is it a portal, but God brings you right up before his throne in it. Here, one minute Satan is in, I think that's Jesus, was Carrie there, but I think, oh, suddenly they're gone. See, Satan looks in that realm. We see physical realm. How many here can see your angels all the time? Did you know I can see them every once in a while when God allows me to? They're beautiful. In my church in the 1980, over in Rose Lake Hall in, in Bonnie Lake, we had an angel actually come to church and over 70 people saw it. 
How does that happen, Pastor Kerry? When we get serious with God, stop playing religion. We went, find out, God, what do you have for us? What is the mission you want me to do? I realize I'm married now. I have a husband. I have this. What is it you want me to do for your kingdom? Now, sitting long enough for God to give you that kind of instruction, you're going to find your life taking on the fullness and the graces of God. Listen, so... Having taken the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench how many? All. And the helmet of salvation, which is Jesus. So here you go when you say, Father, in Jesus' name, all this armor comes on. Remember, it's described for us to understand what it is. You see, when you got the armor on, your mind's covered with the helmet, right? Your thoughts are never negative when you got the armor on. They don't wander off on you. When you've got the armor on, you are in right standing with God. You're confident. When you've got the armor, your feet are ready to share the gospel. Then you've got this, uh, uh, the helmet of salvation and taking the sword of the what? The sword of the, notice the big S. Sword of the Holy Spirit. Who lives in you? The Holy Spirit. And when you learn to speak right... He will take the words that you say and turn them into a sharp two-edged sword. It will cut cancers, heal sickness, and it will tell the devil and put him in his place. So say, I have the whole armor of God. Every time I say, Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, remind me who I am and not what others think I am. Remind me, Lord, my past is over with. I live today on, and I'll live it by faith, and will trust you that Satan cannot fight you. All right, so look up at me for a minute. Who lives in you? When you start to have a rough day, what are you going to do? Pray. Line yourself up. If you're having a rough day, it isn't the devil. It's your flesh listening to him. So stop. Go to God real quick and let God adjust your flesh. Then you can walk off and the devil will say, Hey, I was talking to you. Stop right there, Carrie. Stop walking off on me. I was talking to you. And the voice of a stranger, we will not follow. If you got something out of this morning, would you give the Lord a praise? <laughs>